Welcome to the Fortified Life Podcast, where we learn how to develop a dependency on Jesus in the marketplace. From the boardroom to the bathroom, God is with you. Here's our host, author, speaker, teacher, encourager, stewardship coach, and my husband, the man they call Mr. Fortified, Jason Davis. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Fortified Life podcast, where we are passionate about developing a dependency on Jesus in the marketplace. I'm your host, Jason Davis, aka Mr. Fortify. Every week, we have the pleasure of bringing on authors, speakers, coaches, CEOs, influencers, founders, venture capitalists, and talking to them about putting God back in business. And it's no different this week. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm really excited about our guest. Uh, we met, uh, shout out to GCBN, the Georgia Christian Business Network. We met at the gala last year, and she is a powerful woman of God. But before I bring her on, let me introduce her to you. Vanessa Griffin Gamage is an advocate for empowering individuals to embrace their leadership potential and amplify their distinct leadership voices to elevate their careers with a special focus on champion, championing women. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the Fortified Life, Vanessa Griffin Gamage. Vanessa, what's going on? Hello, hello, Jason. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so humbled, sir. Absolutely. Well, Vanessa, when we take a look at your bio, we see some I, at the top end of the intro. I said powerful now. <laughs> I said I was excited. We see <laughs> words like advocate, empowerment, amplify, <laughs> leadership. And we know that you just didn't wake up in 2024, <laughs> Vanessa, and, and just attain all of that experience. So, Take us on a trip down memory lane and talk about your professional background. Oh, thank you, Jason. And uh, you are correct. No, I did not wake up in 2024 uh, with those words <laughs> uh, describing me. And it's like, okay, yeah, that works. No, I started um, my professional career uh, over 22 years ago, uh, probably 20, almost 24 years ago now, I believe. But anyway, um, it was, I was, Still in college, um, wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do. My parents, my dad made a joke, was like, uh, you making school a career, huh? <laughs> so that was funny for me. Um, before that, though, I was in the um, uh, Army Reserve and Alabama National Guard for eight years. Um, wow. I'm originally from Alabama, although I've lived in Georgia for uh, a very long time. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank but you for started- your service, by the way. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I, I I look at it and it was just an opportunity. You know, if you're not sure what you want to do yet, you know, at that time, the military was a good option for me. And I learned a lot. I met a lot of people, different kinds of people being from a small country town, Alabama. So to see a diversity of people and, and experiences, it was awesome. Uh, from there, as I mentioned, moved to Georgia, went to school and finally this, uh, settled on a career. Uh, uh, at least a, a, a career that I thought I would like, <laughs> went into it. And it was just by the grace of God that I started this company. And you're talking about the between two years of, uh, in, in, um, in my career. And it, and it was all at the same company. And I know that's kind of amazing and hard to believe that you spent 22, 23 years at the same company. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I I enjoyed the company there. Uh, It was just a great company. And as I started there, um, how I got there was the grace of God. Mm. You know, it's in communications. um, And so uh, MSO, which is uh, um, multi-service operator. And I started off in our knock center, you know, and and I couldn't even pronounce the word telephony. I call it telephony. <laughs> and that was the funny part. That's why I say it was all grace. It was all God that got me in the door and that got me there as well as having a, a friend and a connection there. But I had to do the work and the work really was just going in, being my best version of myself and trusting God. And before you know it, I was there. And from there, I was able to go to different positions, usually in a new team, um, moved throughout different parts of the company, enjoyed my stay there. 
and experiences, you know, and, and telecommunications sometimes depends on the certain departments is a male dominant type environment. And so plenty of times I found myself as being the only uh, female, only woman, as well as the only, you know, um, African-American or black uh, person in the room. So I learned a lot along that journey that kind of pushed me towards uh, my passion of, of helping women, especially women, to, to move in their career and leadership roles that God has called them to and to do it without compromising their values, you know, mm. especially as Christian women and, um, and all of that. Wow. Uh, Vanessa, that was very uh, insightful. Thank you for sharing that. There was a couple of themes. Gosh, I'm going to make sure I stay focused because you get, you get, <laughs> there's a lot of meat on the bone to chew, to digest, but First, uh, I said this a second ago. Thank you for your service. I I can't help but but ask Vanessa because there's one thing that our uh, that the armed services really teaches and reinforces, and that's leadership. Like I haven't yes. run into uh, Army, Navy, Air Force, <laughs> Marine, whatever, and it's like front and center leadership. So what what were some of the leadership lessons that you took away from serving? Oh, my goodness. Um, you're making me think way back now, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say that it was owning, learning to own who you are. Mm. Sometimes, and I was put into, even in the military, uh, even though I was reserve and, and National Guard, you still have to go through the same training as somebody who's full time. And so you go through those weeks of, of um, basic training and also going for your M, uh, MOS. And so while in basic, I was put into leadership positions, not because I, I didn't seek I didn't seek them. Um, I just became the platoon, you know, leader <laughs> of our uh, of our section of our platoon. I, I, I shared that role with another female. A platoon leader, and it was all females. So today, I think they may combine them, have males and females together. But at that time, it was separate, and I got into a role, and it was like learning to to one um, own who I am, know who I am, but then also to know who those are responsible for. Mm. But in doing so, you know, I, I, one lesson I learned very the hard way <laughs> and quickly was we were getting ready for inspection and uh, we were up to, you know, two, three o'clock in the morning, you know, cleaning the barracks, cleaning, making sure our bunks, making sure our drawers, our, our uniforms, our clothing, everything was in place. Everything was spotless because we had inspection and I was the one, I'm a doer. I, I, I do, I do. I mean, if I'm going to ask you to do it, I'm going to do it. And I was doing it, doing it, doing it to it. And my platoon sergeant uh, came in, one of them came in and saw that I was, I guess he'd been watching me for a minute, doing more work than some people. And long story short was that I, he, he scalded me and he punished me. And the punishment was I had to stand there and watch while my team did what I call muscle failure, muscle failure activities. So he just like just ran him in the ground because he was like, that's not what you're supposed to do. And, that, and so I learned that what my role was and I was supposed to do, and I was to delegate, ensure things were getting done you know, go by and encourage whatever it needs to be done, but not to be the doer and not pay attention to my team. So that was a, one of the biggest lessons I learned right there uh, about leadership. And uh, and that was accountable for my team. And now the quote unquote punishment they were going through, muscle failure, was because I wasn't uh, doing my job uh, correctly. Mm. Wow, that's huge, Vanessa. Like we could end the show right there just off of... <laughs> own who you are and know who you're responsible for. And then I just, the way I think about it, I just worded it like this, Vanessa, from doing to delegation. Yes. yes. <laughs> I don't know if that's a book or a product for you, but <laughs> you may need to, to do something with that. Cause when you said that, I felt that. Oh, wow. Thank you. I felt it when you, you when you said it, uh, so Vanessa, when you think about your, and I love that, is it telephony? Is it telephony? <laughs> it is telephony. <laughs> <I know>. telephony. <laughs> but I did. It was so funny. I was like, telephony? I was like, oh my goodness. I am so glad I was not hired based upon my knowing how to say the word correctly. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so when you think about the transition from the military into industry, Vanessa, what was that like for you? It, it wasn't, it wasn't really hard. You know, my thing was that you, well, I'm gonna say it wasn't really hard. And there was a part, another part that was kind of hard. And I had to learn the hard way too. Uh, one thing about a lot of companies, they love military, people in the military. Military, their job, to be honest with you, is to break you down and build you back up, to be uh, to be someone who contributes to, you know, armed forces, to whatever role you're in, whatever your MOS in. Your MOS is in. So when I went to corporate, I still very much had that military mindset. And I believed in um, structure. I believe in, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Rank. I will say rank. But mm. I believe in following the path to leadership, which means that if I had a problem, I went to my supervisor first. You know, chain of command, that's the words I'm looking for. Yeah. So I, re- I really believe in and, and, re- and respect the chain of command. Uh, I, I realized I, ch- I respected the position more. I'm not saying I didn't respect the person that's in that position, but I may not have agreed with some things and how that person in that position did things. But it was because I respected the position. I always kind of followed rank. I went, if I had a problem, an issue, went and talked to, you know, that person. Uh, if it was if it was my leader or another leader, if not, you know, I just followed chain of command. Mm-hmm. And that's great. And that I think they, a lot of companies and corporations look for that. But at the same time, it could be a stumbling block for you too. And I learned that the hard way. Mm-hmm. That by following the chain of command and just doing and doing. And if that chain that person I was speaking with and we didn't resolve the issue or it didn't come out to something positive or I didn't feel something was right about it I didn't necessarily go and step over that person to go to the next level of command you know and in corporate especially in leadership you have to develop those relationships and that's very very important and know how to work with different types of people different kinds of people but at the same time You have to know how to, I'm going to say maneuver and move around people who may not want you to move also. Hopefully that makes sense. If they don't want, Mm. if you're great at what you do and you're good, and unfortunately you may have some leaders who are like that and because you make them look good. And I'm not saying I always make my leaders look good, you know, but I'm saying that I think because I always follow the chain of command, if my leader disagreed or, or said no or didn't see it my way, I didn't push the envelope. I didn't try to go above and beyond or go around and making other connections and stuff. So that was a lesson learned right there is that, yes, that's your leader, uh, but your leader or your supervisor and media supervisor may not always be your the best advocate for you, may not always be your uh, a good mentor, the best mentor for you, or even the best sponsorship person for you to continue moving in your career. Mm. <clears throat> wow, Vanessa, we've gotten leadership development, we've gotten career transition, <laughs> we've gotten managing up. I mean, these are just some of the themes I'm pulling out from what you're saying. I told you all she was powerful. <laughs> so, <laughs> Well, thank you, Jason. It's been a, a, a definitely a road. Uh, and, and, and I want to kind of step back and say this, too. And even though I, I grew up in a church, so I told you I'm from I'm a small town in Alabama. Mm-hmm. Went to church with my granny all the time. My mom would send us when she couldn't go. So I grew up in the church. And when I came to Atlanta, you know, and, and finally found that church home. And even though I, I knew God and had a relationship with God and knew the Holy Spirit, I still allowed some things that were meant for good at the time to be a block now, you know, and again, and climbing the career ladder. And, I, and so God had to really work through me and go through some things. And he allowed me to go through some things. He was always there. I won't even lie. It was plenty of times I wanted to walk out <laughs> of my career or my current job. But uh, the Holy Spirit was like, nope, nope, nope. And I'm so grateful and thankful that I was obedient to the voice, even though I didn't understand, even though I was sometimes uh, angry or maybe hurt. But I understand that purpose and see it now because now that kind of leads to to what I'm passionate about today, which is what you uh, when you introduced me and it's been helping women to, you know, em- embrace their leadership potential to be empowered, you know, by their voices and, and not compromise their values so to know that they can still represent our Heavenly Father 
in whatever career and industry they're in to do it in a way that is um, that brings some glory and honor and praise and also doesn't cause you to compromise your values. You know, there's a way my, my thing I always say is there's a there's always a way to say everything. You know, you can say anything in the right way to get what you need and you can say anything in the wrong way, the same thing. And it would be, you know, go against you. So I'm, I'm, I'm very passionate about helping women in their careers and to elevate to that next level. Wow. You just reminded me <clears throat> of a book I read years ago, Vanessa called Humble Inquiry. Uh, mm. the, the gentle art of asking, not telling. Yes, yes. <laughs> and so you just highlighted that for me, but it's a perfect segue, Vanessa, to talk about your entrepreneurial endeavors and you being passionate about uh, the leadership potential of women. So talk to us about uh, what you're doing in the marketplace. You've gained all this corporate experience working in uh, and technology. Uh, but yeah, talk to us about how that's translated to your entrepreneurial efforts now. Okay, definitely. Um, so one thing I will say, um, and hopefully this doesn't come out wrong or sound wrong, you have to be, I think, a special, not special, a special kind of person to stay in corporate America, because there is a lot of politics. There is a lot of things that make you go, huh, what? <laughs> And unfortunately, it is what it is. You know, it's, there's a lot of um, secularism in there also. And you have other people who are in there trying to climb that corporate ladder as well. And they don't know God, you know. So either it's like you got to come in and know who you are, know what it is that you want and stand firm in that and then start making that climb and having the right people around you to cheer you on. And like you said, and, and know how to handle <clears throat> how to handle people who may not know God, who may not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, because at the end of the day, we represent our heavenly father and all that we do. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, I, I believe in my heart that he wants us to represent him in all uh, industries, all levels, you know, from the top all the way down, you know, and everything that our life shows or displays at work, at home, uh, in a community reflects him. So you have to be very mindful and careful of how you, at least I did, was very mindful and careful of how, how I acted in or uh, responded to certain things in corporate America. Um, I seen where some people were act a certain way and get away with it. And I'm like, well, OK, well, can I do that? You know, because I, if I get just passionate about something, a.k.a. mad <laughs> and want to <laughs> uh, want to share my point of view or what I thought about it. You know, it's like, no, you know, I, I represent my heavenly father, so I can't come that same way. And one of the biggest things I realized was that there's always somebody watching. There are those that are watching that it could be, you know, who know Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. And there are those who don't. There could be people who are practicing other other uh, religions and stuff. And so there's always someone watching. And, I, and although I didn't go around, uh, you know, pushing my my relationship with Jesus into anyone's face or anything. But when you asked me, <laughs> or you come to me and you asked me a question, that was a, you opened the door and I got a chance to, to, to share, you know, my, the lessons learned, which were hard lessons that I would be like, Lord, what's going on? I don't get this. Why am I, why is this makes no sense? I mean, and I think the last two or three years, I, I went through <clears throat> a period of time where I'm going to say, um, the, the comment that I heard from, I was dealing with a certain leader and it was like, if she would just go back to the way she was. Mm. And I, even I sat there and meant like, what do you mean the way I was? What was that? And I realized <clears throat> that I think trying to, again, being a, you have to be, a, be, you have to have the grit to move in corporate America because people will come and say and do, do things and or try to, you know, put you on the, uh, on a hot seat in front of leaders or try to call you out and you got to know how to respond and react to that, not only just with your words, but with your face, with your body language. And so me having gone through that for a period of years and it was like, well, before I just said, OK, yes, I was in the military. I used my military uh, approach. OK, yeah, I don't agree with this, but OK, because my leader said so or this leader says so. OK, I point this out to you. You still say you do it. And I go, OK, as long as you know. And so over time, my voice got quieter 
and quieter, a little bit more. With my team, I spoke out and encouraged and loved doing that and helped them go to the next level and say, hey, you can do this. But when it came to myself, I kind of shrunk down. And so within one day, it was going through a lot of things, but then finally it was like, why are you being quiet? You know, you are a, a black female leader. Uh, there will be other black female leaders or women of color, not just black, but, you know, Asian, Hispanic, whatever it may be, are just women in period <clears throat> in general that will come through and will encounter the same things uh, because technology in some industries, it is male dominant. And I wish that there were things that I had known before that I learned along the way. Had I known before, I could have taken a better control of my career. And not leaving it into the hands of other people thinking that, you know, when I'm not in the room or at the table, they would speak on my behalf or they would create that connection, that relationship. Uh, it, it was just so much I went through in, in two or three years. And from there, one night, the Lord was like, just had me writing. I was just writing out, just writing. I don't even know what I was writing, just writing out things and wished I'd have known and how to help. I had no idea what it was leading to. And that was about four or five years ago, about four years ago. And from there, it took me about another three years to really start seeking what God had for me, what was to put something together to go encourage other women. Being a mentor, yeah, I could do that at my job or speak to anybody, anytime, anywhere, yes. But to go and to kind of put together and kind of jump into entrepreneur, uh, into, into, that, into the, that ring and to be able to encourage women and to put myself out there to be vulnerable, to share the stories, you know, <clears throat> to share the stories, the good, the bad, and the ugly, you know, it was a lot, you know, and it took me a while. And, and finally I was like, yes, Lord. I'm like, okay. Um, I, I went through my company that I was working with, went through a, a reorg and stuff. And after 23 years, almost 23 years, I decided to take a break and, and, and took off and took a sabbatical. And during that sabbatical is when I launched uh, my entrepreneurial business, which is the company is forever striving. And the concept behind that is that I'm always, I'm forever striving to be all that God has called me to be. And I think he reveals this to us as we go through our life and as we being obedient to all that he's called us to. And we listen and look at the opportunities and, and go, okay, Lord, this is not about me. If I'm going through it, it's got to be about other people too. You know, I just was like, I just, I'm all about just being obedient. Like, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, you can use this too. And, and and that's where I've been for the past like year, year and a half, slowly putting that together, rolling that out uh, and just, you know, whenever I have an opportunity to share with other women and to put it out there, I do. Um, and that's it in a nutshell. <laughs> you can see it. I'm not to talk too, Jason. I apologize. <laughs> no. <laughs> Listen, the, the, the show is better when they're hearing less from, from the, <laughs> from the host. It's always better. <laughs> Coming from the guests. So no, I appreciate that. Um, Vanessa, what would you say in, uh, as you're rolling this out, is there a particular uh, process that you take women through? Are there, um, are there cohorts or webinars? What, what, uh, what can women expect when they sit down and meet with you? Cause I would imagine Vanessa, this, what you've given as the value proposition is is major and huge, and I would think there's quite a few that that need this type <laughs> of uh, support and coaching. Uh, so, talk to us a little bit about um, how you'll go about serving um, the women that need this type of help and support. Okay, Jason, thank you. Um, well, one of the things I'm doing is is one on ones, so mm. I. I I do uh, offer that as a one-on-one. It's a six-month program. Uh, and the method I use is called the D.A.R.E. method. <laughs> and it's, uh, I don't, I have all my notes in front of me, but it's kind of like D.A.R.E. to to step out. Pretty much. Mm. D.A.R.E. And, and it's like a five to six part process. And each of us a D.A.R.E. D.A.R.E. to, D.A.R.E. to, D.A.R.E. yourself. D.A.R.E. to be bold in your career dare to take control of your career and how you elevate or how God allow God to elevate you in that dare to seek out other positions, dare to grow. And it's just like, you know, it, there's a lot of things that I'm still working through, even for myself on the entrepreneurial side that applies to me uh, from the corporate side too, you know, and it's just stepping out. And I know, I know is a no. Okay. 
but you did your part. I did my part by, you know, saying, asking a question and putting it out there. So it is a six month program uh, and it can go over to a year with support. I have not started any cohorts yet or even kind of like group programs. Uh, I, I, that is my plan in the future, but not right now immediately. But pretty much it's just I'm open to one on one coaching. It doesn't have to be in technology. You know what it is, is that you the the method and the process uh, the DARE method is you can use this in any field. You mm-hmm. know, it's about uh, recognizing who you are, who you are, what you bring to the table. Uh, that we don't have to compromise our values to grow into leadership and then how to start planning out your your career climb, whether it's, you know, where you want to be in six months, where you want to be in a year. You know, one of the things I definitely advocate uh, for women is to understand the promotion structure at your company. Every company is different, you know, uh, from an IC or individual contributor going into a leadership, it could be certain classes you have to take, certain skill sets you have to have. Uh, if you're already into uh, leadership and you feel like you're stuck and that's kind of what I was like, I was stuck, you know? And so back to the comment was, well, if she just go back to the way she was, you know, where I didn't speak up for myself, I didn't advocate for my team. I didn't fight for some things and, you know, fight for a promotion or fight for a raise or ask questions or what do I need to do to get promoted? But one of those things is understand what that career path looks like at your company. And the second thing I would say there, too, is not just at your company, but, you know, don't limit yourself to there. You know, look at opportunities, look at other companies and whatever field and technology, whether it's technology, whether it's a teacher, whether it's in a medical field, whatever you're in. Even if you're working, you know, uh, and everybody's career is different. Your job and what you're passionate about is different. But if you want to move into leadership in that job industry and that uh, field and you know that God's put that on your heart, and I'm I'm here to help guide you in that and to, and to kind of make you think about some things that maybe we don't think about or to ensure that you don't take the long version of that path <laughs> that I took. So that that's pretty much my goal is like, how can I help you to understand how to get there quicker, faster, uh, increase your income, increase your influence, increase uh, uh, the, the God in you at your job without compromising your values. Mm. Outstanding. Uh, Vanessa, we had a uh, gentleman by the name of Chad Hall on in an earlier episode, and he pointed out the skill set of coaching. You don't have to be the expert, different from like consulting or mm-hmm. uh, training where you kind of have to be ahead of the people. Uh, he mentioned coaching because you're taking someone through a process you don't have yes. to be the expert. So folks, as you're listening to Vanessa, and definitely we'll talk about contact information later, uh, the process that coaching takes you through um, is amazing. So for yes. sure, take heed uh, of the the nuggets that Vanessa has already shared. If she's dropped these publicly, I, I can only imagine in a <laughs> one-on-one, right? <laughs> so. Yeah, I am. As you can tell, I'm very passionate about it. It's, it's, it's my heart. Um, I, I even teach these to my nieces and nephews, mm. you know, and, and I think starting with kids uh, in middle school and high school or young as, as young as you can and empowering them and knowing and teaching them how to. Because these are these are skills and things you learn that you can use in life. I mean, mm. yes, I'm talking about career. I'm passionate about leadership and and careers for women. But it really is something that teaches you how to represent uh, God's kingdom as a leader. Uh, even kids in school, you have children who are, you know, running for president. You have uh, kids who are over, you know, the lead, maybe leader in their sports or their basketball or football or the debate team or whatever it may be. But it helps you to grow, grow and gain confidence. Yeah. And then if, if you do, if you do that, it's not something that you know you may sometimes we as adults struggle with later in life. You know, so I, I really just I'm so passionate about. Like I said, I, I push my nieces and nephews encourage them. I show them how to do things, how to handle, how to figure it out. And I just love that I have an opportunity to do that. So even though my journey was, it, it, you know, at a time going through, Lord, what is going on? When I look back at it, you know, I can say, well, thank you. You know, you entrusted this with me to be able to pass it on to other just women too, who are in careers, young, 
women who are in leadership, but also, you know, teach my, my, my nieces and nephews on how to handle themselves, you know, as they grow and get ready to graduate from school and all that good stuff. I love it. Leadership starts at home. <laughs> it starts yeah, that's it. Yes, it does. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Vanessa, what are you most excited about? You know, you made the transition. You're passionate about what God is uh, doing in your own life, but I hear the passion in your voice just about uh, things to come. So what are you excited about in 2024? Are there any upcoming projects that we can expect uh, later on in the calendar year? Yes, sir. So um, I am getting ready uh, in June, probably towards the end of June. Uh, early July, and I don't have a concrete date on it. I'm doing a free uh, free training. So I did one in my first one <laughs> was in uh, in March, and I'm doing another one. And it's just about you know to to just make women think. You know, men are invited to if they want to, but it's more focused to women who are currently in leadership roles or looking to go in those roles. And it's just, you know, it's, it's not nothing long and, and, and all day, maybe like an hour a day, 45 minutes to an hour a day, uh, a three to five day uh, training where it's just to make you think, you know, it's just to open up your mind about, you know, how you continue to uh, take control of your leadership journey yourself and how to map it out and how to do it by staying true to the values that you have uh, regarding your relationship with God. So that'll be coming soon. And I'll announce that on my social media and uh, I'm on Facebook. Uh, Vanessa Griffin, I'm sorry, y'all. I, I'll give this information to Jason, but it's Vanessa Griffin uh, in Facebook. And that's my main um, main area. And I'm also in LinkedIn. So Vanessa Griffin in LinkedIn. And I also have a uh, business page in LinkedIn where it's about encouraging still women. And I do some posting over there also. So LinkedIn and Facebook are probably my primary ways to reach out to me, and I um, make sure I respond back to that. I love it, Vanessa. That was going to be my next question. I was like, man, everybody's all excited. How do they reach out to you, <laughs> folks? You heard it straight from Vanessa herself. You can reach out to her on uh, via Facebook and LinkedIn, and we will have all her contact information in the show notes. So don't you worry. For Fortified Life Podcast dot com or jerichoforce.com slash podcast. So you will be able to reach Vanessa. Uh, well, Vanessa, we are coming to the close here. It, it's been so insightful, the things that you've shared, the passion that you've showed. I just want to take time out and say thank you for coming on the podcast and share about what God has done, uh, what he's doing and what he's going to do in your life. Well, I, I thank you, Jason. I just thank you for just being obedient to the call he has in your life for providing a platform and opportunity for people like me. You know, it's like, oh, what do I do? I just, you know, I'm still new. I'm still learning, you know, but I'm passionate about it, you know, and be able to share that. So I, I, I greatly appreciate this. Thank you, sir, for the opportunity and uh, and and just continues. I know that God's going to continue blessing you and open up many, many more doors as you open up doors for other people like myself. So thank you. Amen to that. Well, uh, folks, that's all we have time for. Remember, we'll have in the show notes where you can uh, reach out and contact Vanessa directly. Uh, but you know how we end things on the Fortified Life podcast. Don't compartmentalize your faith and the marketplace. And from the boardroom to the bathroom, God is with you. We'll see you next time on the Fortified Life podcast. Thank you for listening to the Fortified Life podcast. You can catch us live on Wednesdays at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time and on demand. Check out fortifiedlifepodcast.com for more details. To learn how to live out your faith in the marketplace, grab a copy of Jason Davis's book, Fortified, Being Rooted in God's Plan for Work and Business. Available on Amazon.